A huge worm crawls into the tub and swims towards Kylie's head. Feeling the gentle lapping of the water, Kylie opens her eyes and lets out a scream. While the worm rushes into Kylie's mouth, Kylie is in a tug of war with the worm in her mouth. It is pulled out of her mouth and thrown against the wall. Instead of fainting, the worm keeps moving towards her. Kylie has to burn it with a curling iron. She runs out crying only to see her mom in convulsions. A large number of worms crawl into the room and parasitize her to sisters. It turns out that the worms are extremely violent alien creatures that have the ability to reproduce. In order to invade and overrun the earth, a mother worm hides inside a meteorite and crashes into a small town in the United States. Grant and Brenda find it in the forest at night while they're having an illicit affair. Ever since Grant curiously poked the egg with a twig, it split open and spat out a splinter into Grant's abdomen. He was suddenly curled up on the ground while the worm crawled towards his brain and tried to take over his nervous system. Brenda freaked out and asked Grant if he was okay. Grant immediately Saturday up and was bleeding from every hole. When he got home, he was a completely different person. Grant started eating raw meat and sleeping on the floor and enjoyed it. As the days went by, Grant could feel a change in his body, as if something was trying to come out, but it didn't reject the feeling. One day his wife, Starla, was doing the laundry and was surprised to find the basement door locked. She wondered what her husband was doing in their room these days. Grant explained that he had a problem and needed to be alone, and the basement was a good place to do that. When Starla went to take a shower, Grant suddenly walked into the bathroom, his heart pounding with desire. Suddenly the tentacles come out of his chest. He tucks them back into his shirt and buttons it back up. As he was about to open the bathroom door, his senses came back to him and he told himself he would never hurt his wife and ran out of the house. Grant found Brenda and told her he had come home early that night because he wasn't feeling well. And that's when they had sex again. During this time, the two tentacles burrowed into Brenda's abdomen and quickly assimilated her. On the other hand, Starla went to a friend's party and came home to find Grant a different man. He was much older and his face was swollen. It looks like the parasite is growing and will soon take over his entire body. But Grant was still lying about being stung by a bee, saying it was nothing serious, just an allergic reaction. Starla was so scared, she wanted to take him to the doctor. Grant said that he had already seen a doctor and was prescribed medicine and that he would be fine soon. Starla was a little relieved. The next day, she realized that Grant's illness was even worse. So she asked the doctor about it. The doctor said Grant hadn't been to see him for a year. Starla realized that something was wrong. Why would her husband lie and why wouldn't he go to the doctor when he was so sick? At night, Grant packed a lot of raw meat in black plastic bags and went to the cabin in the woods. Brenda was locked in the cabin, crying in pain. When she saw Grant come in, she asked him if he had any food. She was starving. Grant dumped all the raw meat on the ground and told her that she would feel better if she ate it. Brenda picks up a piece of raw meat and puts it in her mouth and can't stop eating it. On the other hand, Starla goes to take out the trash and runs into Carl the cop. Carl immediately asks where Grant is. Starla was confused. It turns out that Brenda is missing and was seen with Grant. Starla said that her husband wasn't home and she didn't know where he was. Carl had to leave for a while, leaving a business card, asking Grant to contact him as soon as he got home. When she got home, Starla held the card in her hand and thought about it. Her husband, Grant, has been acting differently lately and locking himself in the basement all day. Could this all have something to do with Brenda's disappearance? Starla breaks the lock on the basement door. And just as she opens it, a putrid smell comes over her. She cautiously walked into the basement praying that Brenda wasn't locked in there. She opens a curtain and instead of Brenda, there's a sea of dead animals. She runs out of the basement, already in a state of shock, and immediately calls the police. Ka, but there is no answer on the phone. Starla had to leave a message saying that there were a lot of dead animals in the basement and that the police should come right away. At that moment, her husband Grant was standing outside the window staring at her. His appearance became more horrible when Starla realized this. She ran for her life. Grant was so angry that he grabbed Starla's body and said, Why are you hiding from me? Then he pressed Starla to the ground. Starla struggled desperately to pick up her phone cell phone. Grant angrily asks if he's gotten ugly, so she doesn't love him anymore. In that case he'll show her something wonderful. He rips his shirt open to reveal horrific tentacles. The tentacles try to burrow into her abdomen and turn her into a monster. Starla grabs a chair and hits him with it, then goes to pick up her cell phone from the floor. Grant didn't expect Starla to call the police, so he strangled her and tried to suffocate her. In the nick of time, police officers Carl arrives and points his pistol at Grant. Although Grant is very strong, he was afraid of being hit by the bullet and ran away. When he left, his arms became very long and floppy like the tentacles of a squid. The policemen were dumbfounded and wondered where this monster had come from. Every day after that, farmers would come to the police station to report that their animals had been killed for no apparent reason. Carl and his men arrived at the farm and saw the shocking scenes and knew that these perverted acts were all done by Grant. The police chief ordered Carl to solve the case immediately. Based on the missing livestock, Carl deduced Grant's hiding place and his next target farm. A large number of police officers are ready to ambush the farm in advance. Starla wanted to be there, too, so that if anything happened, she could stall Grant for a while. It's nighttime, 
and Grand shows up. At this time, his body has evolved again, and he has grown many red tentacles, but the evolution has not reached the final step, and it can still be seen as a human. Grant walks out to the farm and kills the old cow with a whip, then drags the cow's body away. Starla gets up the courage to call out to Grant and says you're just sick, you just need to get treatment and you'll be fine, and I'll be by your side. Grant was really touched by this, but he knows he's not sick, he's a parasite and there's nothing he can do about it. He dragged the old cow's body with him as he continued on his way. Then the farmer came out to avenge the cow's death. Grant was instantly enraged and threw a tentacle at him. Soon the man's face shows a reddish mark, but nothing else. It seems that the power of the tentacle is not that great. But the next moment, the man's whole body split open. The police are so scared, they open fire. Grant turns around and runs away. All the tentacles on his body are writhing on the ground, like a giant octopus. It's scary and funny. The police didn't give up, and followed him all the way to a cabin deep in the woods. Carl mustered up the courage to go in and was dumbfounded. In front of him was a huge ball of flesh that looked as if it might explode at any moment. And on top of it was a woman's head. You guessed it right. Brenda has completely evolved into an alien creature. When she sees the cop coming, she asks him if he has any food. She is starving to death. Carl suppressed his fear and asked her what happened. The woman turns into a huge meatball and rolls around twice before exploding. Countless worms exploded out of her body and went into people's mouths, causing police officers to fall down. Luckily Carl reacted quickly and covered his mouth with one hand and Starla's mouth with the other. When the worms realized they couldn't get into their mouths, they scattered and headed for the woods. Carl used his walkie-talkie to contact the police station, but there was no signal. It looks like the human world is about to be devastated. The alien worms move in a very regular pattern. First they came to the farmer's cottage. The farmer's daughter, Kylie, is taking a bath, and the next thing she knows, the worms are in her tub. Kylie tries to swat the worms off her back, but they're trying to get into her mouth. She stretched out her fingernails and pinched the worm, which led to many horrifying scenes. It turns out that the worms are parasitic, attacking creatures on multiple planets, and then controlling the entire planet. Kylie was so terrified by the horrific scene, that she yanked the worm out of her mouth. Then she burns it with a curling iron. It seems that these worms, although horrible, can be destroyed. Kylie ran out of the bathroom to get help from her parents. But as soon as she gets out, her parents come rushing out of the side and spit out a mouth full of blood. Obviously infected, Kylie goes to her sister's room and finds out that both of her sisters are also parasitized. What's worse is that the worms are coming at her from all directions. Kylie escapes from the villa and hides in a car outside. Meanwhile, the worms didn't give up looking for a way in. On the other hand, the mayor of the town brought his men to the woods to carry the dead policemen. During this time, one of the policemen suddenly came back to life and crept up behind Starla. Starla turns around and is startled. He said in Grant's voice, love and marriage are secret. I shouldn't have strangled you that day, and I've been regretting it every day since. As soon as he's finished speaking, the other cops come back to life, and they all speak in Grant's voice. It turns out that Grant has a mother worm inside him that can control the movement of all the worms. He said to Starla, I still love you, come home with me. Starla gets goosebumps and picks up her gun and shoots him in the head. Then one of the worms ran off into the woods. Starla and the mayor run for the woods, as the other cops are closing in. On the other side, Kylie's parents and sister come back to life. They tell Kylie to open the car door, and their attitude goes from mild to violent. Her father picks up a brick and smashes the glass. Kylie screamed and begged them not to do it. Luckily, Carl was nearby to see what was going on and rushed over to ask what they were doing. Kylie took the opportunity to run out of the car and told Carl that her family had been taken over by the worms and had lost consciousness. Seeing the four of them coming this way, Carl immediately took Kylie to the car. Before the two of them leave, they see Starla and the mayor running for their lives. So they get in the car. Kylie says she's seen other images of alien beings that suggest they're from Mars. Now Grant's face and body can change into any shape, which is terrifying. And he reproduces larvae, which he then parasitizes, so we can control the minds and bodies of other creatures. Just as Kylie was talking, an evil car came crashing down on her. It turns out that the whole town has been victimized by the parasite. The parasitized residents dragged Starla and the mayor out of the car to an unknown location. In the panic, Carl was only able to save Kylie. Starla is taken to Grant's house. But instead of hurting her, the infected residents wipe her wounds and put on brand new pajamas. When Starla wakes up, she finds the windows boarded up and she's locked in a cage with romantic music playing in the living room. She hides the knife in her clothes and walks to the living room, where she sees a horrifying sight. Grant's ultimate evolutionary body covered the walls and floor like dirt. Several living beings were still providing the dirt with essential nutrients. Carl and Kylie arrive at the police station to see a dingo eating the body of his colleague. The next moment, the dingo leaps into the air and lunges at Carl. Carl kills the dingo and quickly finds a grenade, which he intends to use to kill Grant. Grant pulls Starla close with his tentacles and asks her why she left him and why she chose betrayal. Starla says she never betrayed him and wishes she could get back together with Grant. With that, Grant's tentacles slowly loosened and Starla stepped forward fondly before taking the knife and plunging it into Grant's head. But it didn't hurt Grant. 
Grant used his tentacles to throw Starla against the wall and then strangled her. Just then, Carl jumps into the room and holds up a grenade. But the next moment, he's thrown out the window by the tentacles, and the grenade hits the pool with a splash. Their only hope is dashed. Is human society truly hopeless? As Grant stretched out his tentacles to drag Carl over to him, Carl seemed to think of something and grab a nearby gas canister. Then he inserted his tentacles into the gas pipe, and so the gas continued to flow into Grant's body. Grant realized something was wrong, but it was too late. Starla picked up the gun on the ground and shot Grant. With a ban, Grant's entire body exploded. After the mother worm was destroyed, the other infected people also fell. In the end, only three people in the town survived. The Slither, released in 2006, is a horror movie that is more disgusting than scary. There are a lot of scenes in the movie that are very disturbing to watch. Let's watch a movie together to experience a different life. You can subscribe to save review and leave comments.